Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel dedicated to helping you earn more, spend less, and invest the difference. So today we're gonna to be talking about financial advisors, whether or not you should use one, and if so, which financial advisor is right for you. But before we get into that, if you find educational content like this useful, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below. I really enjoy hearing from you guys, both your questions, your success stories, or your failures. Ultimately, we're all trying to achieve the same thing, which is to improve our financial situation. And the best way to do that is to learn from each other as we all go down this journey together. All right, so enough of that. Let's stop beating around the bush and let's get straight to the good stuff. Should you use a financial advisor? No, never, never, ever, ever. In fact, realistically, this is where the video should end. But for those of you guys out there that think that they don't know enough about personal finance and they need somebody to manage their money for them. Let's go through a few examples and showcase just how bad financial advisors actually are. So maybe you're brand new to investing and you don't really know anything about money. You know, I know people that spend dozens of hours each and every week fine tuning and perfecting their fantasy football teams yet they don't spend an hour a year looking at their investment portfolio. So some of these people are saying, you know, I don't know the first thing about investing, so surely it's better to hire somebody that does know what they're doing and they can get me a better return on my money than I could do myself. But the truth of the matter is, if this person that didn't know a single thing about finance if they simply just invested their money in a broad index fund of maybe the S&P 500, they would significantly outperform any financial advisor out there. So the first thing that you gotta realize about a financial advisor, and this might blow your mind, is that most financial advisors don't care about you. And not only do they not care about you, but they don't care about the investment options that they're giving to you. Most financial advisors are not recommending that you buy the financial products that are actually the best. Instead of offering you the best financial products, more often than not, they are going to recommend products that they get a kickback for. Meaning that every time you buy this product, that company is then going to give that financial advisor a piece of the cut. They're gonna give them a kickback such that the financial advisor makes money every time that you invest in this particular product. And that product that the financial advisor is recommending doesn't even have to be a good product. It just has to be a suitable investment product. It could be subpar, but since it qualifies as a suitable investment product, they're eligible to recommend it to you. And this is because most financial advisors are not fiduciaries. See, fiduciary is just a fancy term, meaning that they have a financial responsibility to you. Meaning that if they were a fiduciary, the products that they were recommending would have to be nothing but the absolute best products in their opinion. But since they're not a fiduciary, they could recommend any product that they want. And that's why they're gonna recommend products that they get a kickback for, because they make more money that way. And the second thing that you gotta realize about financial advisors is that contrary to popular belief, they are not some sort of mathematical whiz kid. They did not graduate Harvard at 13 years old. They don't know anything special about the market. There's nothing intrinsically valuable about the knowledge that they have. They don't know if the stock market is gonna go up or down or which particular products are gonna outperform other products any more than anyone else knows. So think about it this way. The average financial advisor earns roughly $89,000 a year, which is a pretty decent salary in its own right. However, if they were able to, with any degree of certainty, accurately predict what was gonna happen in the markets, they would make a lot more than $89,000 a year. They would be investing themselves and they would rapidly become millionaires and billionaires 
they wouldn't be working for some financial company. They would own the company. They wouldn't be giving financial advice to you. They wouldn't be giving financial advice to anyone. They wouldn't be sharing their secrets if they actually had any secrets. But the sad reality is they don't have any secrets. They don't have any specialized knowledge of what the market is gonna do today, tomorrow, or 10 years from now. They're taking a guess just like you and I. But in their case, they're more than happy to take a fee for their guess. And that brings us to reason number three of why financial advisors suck, is that they charge exorbitantly high fees. And these fees get charged whether you make money or lose money. So it doesn't matter to them if you succeed financially or not, because either way, they're still collecting their fees. So most financial advisors, as well as recommending these subpar financial products that they get a kickback for, they're gonna charge roughly a one or 2% fee each and every year, regardless if you earn money or lose money. Now you might be saying a 2% fee isn't really that massive, and on the surface, it doesn't really appear that way. But when it comes to compound interest, a 2% difference over the long periods of time can make enormous differences. So let's look at it this way. Let's assume that you invest $5,000 a year for the next 40 years until your retirement age, and then you try to cash out. If you invested that money at a 10% rate of return, which is roughly what the stock market has historically averaged, you would come out with roughly a little over $2.4 million once you're finally done after 40 years. But if you take that same example of investing $5,000 a year for 40 years, if instead now you add on a 2% management fee, and so instead of making 10% per year in interest, you're only essentially making 8% per year. In this case, after 40 years, you're only gonna have about $1.4 million. That's roughly a million dollar difference. Like that's almost half as much money as you would have had had you not been paying these fees. So even a 2% fee can make game-changing differences over the long run. So once you factor in all of these fees, the vast majority of actively managed accounts significantly underperform a simple index fund. In 2019, only about 29% of actively managed accounts outperformed the S&P 500. And the numbers get significantly worse the longer the time period is. So over the last 15 years, 92.2% of all actively managed funds have underperformed the S&P 500. So you might be saying, well, that means that there were roughly 8% that actually outperformed the market. So I just need to find one of those 8% of financial advisors that are doing well and go talk to them and give them my business, right? Wrong. You see, since financial advisors don't really know any more than you and I know whether the markets are gonna go up or down, then realistically, they're just taking a guess. And that means that sometimes they're gonna be right and sometimes it means they're gonna be wrong. Just like if you were to flip a coin, you have a 50-50 chance of being right. That doesn't mean that if you got it right that you're actually smart or that you have some sort of secret insider information. You just had a 50-50 chance. And the numbers get exponentially worse the more number of times you flip that coin. So if you were to flip the coin 10 times, you would only have roughly a one in 1,000 chance of guessing heads or tails correctly 10 different times. But, if you were to ask 10,000 people to properly guess heads or tails 10 times, then you wouldn't really be surprised if at least a few of them ended up correctly guessing all 10 times. That doesn't mean that these few people are magically smarter than everyone else. It just means by the law of averages, at least some people will just randomly 
outperform the market. And that's what's happening with these financial advisors. That's why these 8% of people are outperforming the market. They're not any smarter than the other folks. They just happen to be the lucky ones. But surely financial advisors actually believe in what they're doing. They believe that they are bringing value to their customers, right? Wrong. Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, the Oracle of Omaha, one of the world's most famous investors. He's always in the top five wealthiest people on the planet. Back in 2007, he made a public bet to anyone in the world that was willing to take him up on his offer. And he bet that an actively managed fund would significantly underperform just a regular S&P 500 index fund. Once you account for the actively managed funds, fees and costs that are associated with this active management. And he wagered half a million dollars that after 10 years, his index fund that was just passive, completely hands off, would outperform these investment funds. And like I said, this was a public bet. Anyone could take him up on this. So out of the thousands of different financial advisors and systems out there, there was only one group that actually took him up on his offer, Protege Partners. Unfortunately for Protege Partners, it was extremely lopsided. It was no contest. In fact, Protege Partners gave up and called it a loss well ahead of the 10-year benchmark of when this bet was supposed to end. In fact, by the end, Warren Buffett had almost quadrupled the amount of money that this actively managed hedge fund had gained simply by investing in completely passive index funds. So not only was only one person brave enough to actually try to defend what it is that they do, their financial advice that they offer people, but they got smoked in this bet. And that's the reason why I think that under no circumstance should anyone ever use a financial advisor. You're probably going to be significantly better off if you simply invest in a completely passive, hands-free index fund of some sort. Personally, I use a lot of Vanguard index funds and ETFs. I use VTI, the Vanguard Total Index, and VOO, their S&P 500 index fund. Both of these are very, very low cost, passive index funds that mimic the broad market. Now that's not financial advice. Do your own research, invest in whatever you think is best for you, but that is what I personally invest in. So that's gonna do it for us today, why financial advisors are terrible and why you should simply just invest in index funds. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks.